The Truth the Girls. Hi, everyone. Well, I've been doing a lot of research on the uh, Boston bombings, trying to figure out what's going on. So I'd like to share with you what I found. Uh, but I don't want to start with the assumption that it was a false flag and work backwards from there. I actually want to try to be really objective. So I'm just going to show you what I found. And then you guys let me know what you think. Although I, I have to say that I have found some very strange things. So first of all, when this happened, the FBI asked everyone to help the investigation by uploading their photos, or sending their photos to the FBI, and a lot of people did that on 4chan. So early on, this photo was going around and people were saying uh, this was a suspect, uh, but then it turned out that this guy, Salah Barhoun, uh, said, uh, I am not the Boston Marathon bomber. He went uh, straight to the police to clear his name and said that he had nothing to do with it. Another suspect was a Saudi Arabian man who in the beginning, you may have heard, was apprehended by the police. He was hospitalized for injuries. They also raided his apartment, but then they said he is a witness, not a suspect. So what's really strange is if he was only a witness and not a suspect, why is he going to be deported? This is really weird because he is going to be deported on Tuesday. And they say it's uh, on security and related grounds. So being deported for reasons of national security. But he didn't do it. Well, why are you deporting him? And he's a witness. Why are you deporting him? I mean, this reminds me of 9-11. It's a bit like when no one was allowed to fly in it or out of the country except for Osama bin Laden's relatives who were allowed to fly back to Saudi Arabia. Well, this reporter on Fox News had a possible explanation for why this guy whose name is Ali Al-Harbi is being uh, deported, uh, he said that it was because this is how they deal with Saudis. If they do something wrong here, they're not turned over to the police, they're just deported to avoid embarrassment. Because I guess Saudis are just very rich and powerful and they don't want it to come out that one of their own did something bad in America and went to jail for it. So they just deport them back to their, their country of origin. Also on 4chan, people uploaded photos of what looked like private security or Navy SEAL or military guys um, hanging around at the bombing looking suspicious and Mike Adams wrote an article on this. Total media blackout now underway on most likely suspects in Boston Marathon bombing. And you can see the, the photos here, they, they were there in full force, obviously in uniform with their security van. And, they, and they're also seen wearing logos very prominently displayed on their clothes and these logos are, are like this. It's a skull, and this is apparently used by Navy SEALs, Blackwater, and a company called uh, Kraft. So whatever they are, they're obviously not hiding that they're part of some uh, security organization. But does this mean that they themselves did the bombing? I mean, I know it's very suspicious. They were doing drills. They had bomb-sniffing dogs. They're talking into their little earpieces and they're doing all that, but does that mean that they actually did the bombing? Well, I don't think so, but why would there be a total media blackout? Well, it's possible that um, they want to downplay the fact that these guys were there in full force with all, with all their fancy equipment and all their gear, and they weren't able to do anything to protect the public, because that would probably be really embarrassing for them if that came out. If they were going to do a false flag, would they really go in there dressed like that? I mean, don't, they would know that people would notice them. So it seems like they would probably be a little more discreet. I mean, it could have been a case of lie hop, let it happen on purpose. It could be that security knew that there was going to be a bomb threat and that they just didn't do anything to stop it. Or it could be that they're just really incompetent. So anyhow, when this first happened, the experts in the government were saying it would probably be some right-wing right -wing terrorists. And also on 4chan, someone had predicted that they would get arrested on Friday and they would be right-wingers and that authorities would find guns and uh, NRA books and use this as an excuse to ban reloading powder and things like that. But in the end, they, they say now that they have the guys who did it and it wasn't some like local right-wingers. It's supposedly these guys. According to the FBI, it's Zokar Tarnalev and his brother, Tamerlan, a couple of brothers from Russia near Chechnya. So these guys have been now the subject of a manhunt and the older one is actually dead. But how did they originally uh, figure out that, that, these would be the, that these were the suspects? Well, according to this article, this, ha this article has photos of supposedly Zokar, 
shown in the crowd. And they also have uh, footage from the security cameras. One thing that made them stand out as suspects was the way that they were walking. They were not walking in the way people normally would at this kind of event. They seemed to be walking as if they had a mission. That's what they said. I guess that made them stand out. And the other thing, according to FBI sources, he said, when the bombs blow up, when most people are running away and victims are lying on the ground, the two suspects walk away pretty casually. So they were acting differently than other people. And then they turned up in Cambridge, Massachusetts and were then the subject of a manhunt in Watertown. Uh, it says here that they robbed a 7-Eleven and then uh, they actually shot a campus security officer at MIT and later ended up uh, carjacking a Mercedes. And then they ended up in a shootout with the police during which they supposedly threw like homemade bombs out the window and during which the older brother Tamerlan ran out of the car and I've heard that he was A shot, uh, B blown up by his own explosives and C um, run over. So I don't know how he exactly died, maybe it was two or more or maybe all of those things. But in any case the older brother died. So you know what, there's actually a lot of evidence pointing to these guys. I mean assuming this is true because the media might just be lying about what happened, but I don't know, let's say, assuming that they really did this, well, I'd say that that would be very suspicious behavior. You go to the marathon, you act kind of weird while you're there, you don't run away when the bomb goes off, then you rob a 7-Eleven, hijack a Mercedes, kill somebody, end up in a shootout, and then the, the younger brother just like put the pedal to the metal in the car that he was in, and drove through the police barricade. Like they had to move aside because he was going to run them over. I'd say that's all very strange behavior. Assuming it's true, like I said. I'd say that it's, it's possible that these guys are on the rampage and that they really did this, but why would they do it? Well, who knows why they did it, but at this time the manhunt is still uh, underway and the, the, the second, the younger brother is still on the loose. Now it's also possible that these guys were set up. I you know, it's possible. Th their father thinks so. Their father says that uh, they were good boys, they were angels, and uh, he said, my son is a true angel, an intelligent boy who was studying medicine. He says that there's no way that they could have done this. And their aunt also had good things to say about them. Uh, their aunt, who lives in Toronto, said that they're, they're innocent. There's no way that they could have done this. I don't know how well these family members actually know these two guys. Uh, not everyone in the family thinks that they're angels. Actually, one of the uncles said that they were losers and do not deserve to exist. So they're getting kind of mixed reviews from their family. So was it a false flag? Well, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I think it's strange that that Saudi guy was deported. I find that really weird. To me, that's like a red flag that something is being covered up. And, and the security force that was at the um, event, I don't think that they necessarily did it. Maybe they let it happen, but it doesn't make sense to me that they would show themselves so prominently and like put their own failure on display. I think they're just trying to hide the fact that they, they couldn't do very much. And, and all the evidence that these guys went on a rampage, you know, the way they acted afterwards. If that's all true, then it, it looks like this was the real thing. But, you know, I could be being deceived. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, Leave me your comments and uh, thanks for listening to me and I'll see you next time.